Good afternoon, friends. Happy Thursday. It's afternoon, about one o'clock. Still don't know the date. <laughs> I just know that uh, it's the last Thursday of the month. I think. Pretty sure. I was like, no, I was got to pay child support next tomorrow, so <laughs> I know this is the last Friday of the month. Uh, anyways, I just want to start off by saying God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Uh, speaking of child support, um, my son started school. I'm pretty excited for him. Um, he's holding his job down. He's got his own place down there. I'm so super excited about my kids and just, man, this last weekend really opened my eyes um, to a lot of things. A lot, a lot of things. Last video, if you guys don't know, I was pretty, I was pretty lost. I'm not going to lie. I was lost. I was, uh, I was, uh, trying to do things my way. We'll just, just put it that way. We'll start off with that. Um, I'm probably going to name this message my way or the highway, um, because a lot of people want it their way or they're just going to hit the highway. You know, if it's not their particular way and they don't get things their way, they just, you know, throw a fit and then things get blown out of proportion people get hurt and anyways um i'm just really excited that uh god can restore lost things god can restore lost times lost lost relationships lost you know anything that we've lost that think we cannot get back god is a restorer of all those it's so awesome the breakthrough that I had this weekend. I talked with you guys before about positioning yourself so you can hear God. And I did. I had to basically get rid of the world, get rid of everything, everybody, and just concentrate on God. Just be in his presence. Just not have anything interrupting me. No notifications, no friends, no people, no work. Know nothing but the Spirit of the Lord inside of a church. Um, I didn't go outside. I went outside a couple times, you know, um, for the people that had to do their smoky treats. <laughs> the people that smoked cigarettes and stuff that had breaks and just to get some fresh air and stuff. But I had to admit, I'd rather be inside because it was hotter than a mug. Oh, it's hot right now. So y'all feel me when it comes to that. You'd rather be in some air conditioning than be out in this stuff. I feel for you people that out there working, though, man, much love. Um... I don't work out in it, but I work in it, if that makes any sense to you. Um, so blessed to have a job. Um, so blessed to be part of a team that care about their people. Um, just life is a blessing. But if we keep concentrating on all the negative things that are going on in our lives, we're never going to be able to see them blessings that we have in front of us. Um, but yeah, um, super excited for my kids going back to school just me friends parents we need to speak life into our kids man we need to really really speak life into them because they'll be going through a situation in life and they'll be like down and out and if you don't go up to them with a supporting attitude or a, a great attitude and like granted we have problems of our own but we need to really be there for our kids with like positive you know, encouragement because we don't want them to just keep continuing down that road. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna really hinder their growth. And my, uh, my daughter was, you know, kind of down. She was kind of, you know, like situations was happening and I just encouraged her. I was like, sis, don't, don't let this get to you, sweetheart. Don't let the enemy get control of you. You got this. It's your last year. Just continue to push forward. I know it may seem kind of diff difficult and not easy for you to understand right now, but God's got a plan. Trust his plan. And that's where a lot of us go wrong. We don't trust his plan. We rely on ourselves. We want it our way. You know, we got a plan without even consulting God at all. We're like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump into this relationship because I think it's the one. Or I'm going to go for this job because, you know, I'm going to quit my job right now because I think this is just the best decision for, you know, the future. Or without even consulting, you know, I'm going to make this decision. I'm purchasing this home. 
you know, I think it's going to be a great investment or I'm going to go rent over here at this house, you know, because I just want to get out of my parents' house or I just want to buy this car. You know, my credit sucks and I'm going to pay this 250% interest rate, you know, just to get a vehicle. You know, we're not even consulting God. We're not giving it a chance to um, manifest at all. We're not asking God, like, God, what do you think about this situation? Lord, I'm about to make this big decision and I need to know. You know, relationships is a big decision. Purchasing a home is a huge decision. Finding your life partner is a big decision and you could easily take the wrong route without consulting with the Lord. And we don't get answers right away, friends. We don't. And time will tell, you know, uh, people, like I say, actions speak louder than words. You know, if we just ask God to direct our paths and make them straight, you know, I mean, you know, he's going to make them straight as possible, but we need to be straight up with him. You know, we need to be like, Lord, I want you first and foremost. And then everything that I need will, you know, come to me when it needs to within per with his perfect timing, you know, with his will, it will be done. You know, we can't rely on ourselves. And a lot of us get discouraged. A lot of us get, you know, um, just really, really sad and down and out and all these feelings. And I was there. I was there. I was losing it. I was absolutely down in a pit. And I know now why it all added up. It was little, it was sin. It was sin that was entering my life. And I had to surrender. I had to rededicate my life to the Lord. Because I had sin that I was living in and trying to cover it up and trying to come off as this perfect person in front of everybody and trying to get everybody's validation and trying to, you know, just get likes and stuff like that. You know, I was preaching about myself when I was telling all these things and I had to leave it at the cross. This weekend is what I needed. I needed time away from everybody and everything so it can just be me and the Lord. A lot of you guys out there that may listen to me and stuff that may click off of me that may, you know, whatever. The breakthrough that you need is not from that person, is not from that drug, is not from that TV show, it's not from that site, it's not from your best friend, it's not from any of that. It's from only the Lord that you're gonna get your breakthrough. You guys keep filling the void of only what the Lord can fill with other things, people, places, and things. I call them other nouns because it's people, places, and things. That you're trying to fill your life with. And I can tell you right now from personal experience. I, Man. It was just so awesome. I mean. I don't want to say too much about it. Because I want people to experience what I experienced. Because we need to position ourselves to hear the Lord. Away from everybody and everything. It's impossible for you to try to get a breakthrough. When you keep surrounding yourself with Facebook. When you keep surrounding yourself with reality television, when you keep surrounding yourself with negative people, you keep surrounding yourself with a workplace that you just hate going to, but be thankful that you got a job, you know, it's very hard to get that breakthrough unless you turn all of that off and turn all, tune all of that out. And then your thoughts get in the way. And then, you know, you're, you're thinking about all these things that could be that isn't even and I know that from personal experience um I was uh I was struggling with my mind um I went to the way this weekend this last weekend and uh I had people I didn't even know that was praying for me praying for me I had people that I didn't even know that cared for me cared for me I had relationships that I thought were dead come to life it's amazing what positioning yourself and putting the Lord first in your life will do. But I'm kind of bummed at the same time. I uh, made a decision that I needed to focus on the Lord, to continue focusing on the Lord and not pursue something that somebody wanted. And... Feelings got hurt, um, including my own. Um, wondering why, I mean, I did this to myself. We did this to ourselves. But it's like, how do I word this that people will understand? But it isn't until you like hurt somebody's feelings or something doesn't go somebody else's way 
that the true colors show. It just... It sucks. Because I'm supposed to love unconditionally, and I do. I do, and I still continue to pray, and I still continue to seek the Lord because... And in hurt, there's bitterness, there's there's just hurt, you know, and it sucks. But as a Christian, how do we get through that? You know, it's only through the Lord that we can get through this, you know. Um, but also, we need to really think about our decisions that we make. Are these going to be the right decisions to better our future? Are we just getting caught in fleshly desires? Are we letting the enemy get to us? Because the enemy knows what we're weak at. And he knew what was my weaknesses and stuff like that. And I had to leave it at the cross. And I had to position myself to hear from the Lord to see what it was that was hindering my relationship with him. And he revealed it right away. Not only did he reveal it to me, but other people gave me the same thing. For Christ's sakes, I got a, I got a bracelet from there. It says... There we go. Man, I'm sweating. Holy moly, I'm sweating. Let's get some air rolling. <laughs> Anyways, it says, uh, Seek first the kingdom and all these things. Matthew 6, 33. That was one of my favorite verses. And that was exactly what I wasn't doing. I wasn't positioning myself to hear the Lord. I wasn't seeking first the kingdom. I was seeking first other people. I was seeking first, you know, validation from everybody and stuff like that. And not... Only the things that I do from the Lord will last. Nothing that I do for you guys is going to last. All I want for you guys is eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. That's what I want. When I gave up all my worldly ways, my life wasn't perfect at all, by no means. And it's hard. It's hard living a Christian walk. You know, you're going to lose some people. Some people aren't going to stick with you. But there was a song that we sang there as at a dedication. And it said, said I was going to get the words to quote it. But um, I'll just give you the gist of it. It said, I had decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And then there's a second verse to it. And then it says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. But then it says, Though none go with me, but still I follow. Though none go with me, but still I follow. Though none go with me, but still I follow. No turning back. No turning back. Man. I love that. I get the chills. I get the Holy Spirit just, just thinking about that moment that I was singing that in front of. In front of the church. In front of the community. Um, yeah. It was such a breakthrough. I am so glad that I went. And I'm glad that I'm getting back involved with the core classes. I mean, I'm telling you, we have to position ourselves. We have to continue to seek the Lord in His face. And um, we can't stop. We can't stop one minute. We can't give the enemy a pinhole. We can't give him a loophole. Or he's going to get in. He's going to get in any way that he can. He's going to get in for that new fellow that you think is perfect for your life. He's going to get in through that new girl that you think is just going to be the best thing that walked into your life since sliced bread. You know, he's going to get in through every individual little way. He's going to get in through that little bikini pic that you see on your Facebook or something that you didn't think that was pornography, but it actually is. Anything that hinders your mind and your thoughts is going to get into your spirit. And then it's going to dwindle and plant that seed and that seed is going to grow and you don't think that it is but it actually is trust me it is you know there's little things that the enemy knows what to do and how to do it very strategically on an accident no it's on purpose with him so um we have to guard our minds we have to guard our minds friends we have to stay rooted in the word and i can't wait to start these core classes back up i'm gonna probably do the first one via zoom because it doesn't get over till nine o'clock at night but the other ones i'm gonna do in person because i really want that bond with other people and i really want to spread the love of jesus christ and get back in the game because i've been out way too long friends and it's time for me to step back out in faith I've been worrying about what other people think so, so much, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the enemy trying to tell me that I'm not good enough, that I don't know enough, that I can never be what people has prophesied over me that I am. So um, I'm going to follow the way, and the way is Jesus Christ, not the world, not some other person, not no other situation, not no thing, nothing out there but Jesus Christ is who I'm going to follow. And the only way we can follow him, you got to read the word. you got to have that word. You gotta have that word. I'm reading out of uh, the Eng English Standard Version today, the Fire Bible. I got this for my birthday. Um, my pastor, one of my pastor, Pastor uh, Ronald Cooper. I love you. If you're watching this, 
I miss you and uh, uh, I'll probably see you guys very soon. Um, but uh, I'm going to read a, a couple of verses, actually probably about three or four, actually five to be exact, because it's uh, uh, Philippians 4, 4 through uh, uh, 4, 9. And then I'm going to read a little footnote. But friends, we need to guard our minds. We have to. Um, what we think about will come out in our actions, you know. If we consist on thinking about negative things or uh, ways to get back at people or ways to do anything but what Christ wants us to do, then the enemy is going to take over your mind. He is. So we need, to, we need to focus on what is true, what is honorable. Well, let's just get to the Word real quickly. We'll read the Word and uh, I'll read this little footnote on about 4.8. Actually, I'm only going to go to 4 8. No, we'll go to 4 9. We'll just do that. Okay. Uh, Philippians, English Standard Version. Um, Philippians 4 4. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Friends, that's what we need to do it's in black and white it's the bible that's the words but i'm going to read a little footnote that really takes you a little deeper um into it it's about four eight the focusing on whatever is pure it's kind of fix your mind on these things that are pure honorable and excellence and commendable and lovely you know um it says to experience god's peace and freedom from anxiety Believers must fix their minds on those things that are true, noble, right, pure, etc. If you do these things, says Paul, the God of peace will be with you. The result of allowing our minds to be occupied with the ungodly things of the world is that the joy, nearness, and peace of God are lost. They're lost. That's exactly where I was, is lost. And our hearts are no longer guarded. It wasn't. That's why when you seen me on my last video, I was, I was broken. The Lord is the only person that can fix us. Not no other person. Not no other place. Not no other thing. We can't run away from anything. You're just going to keep running. Whether it's from person to person, from place to place, or from thing to thing. We have to find what the root of the problem is and fix it. But only the revelation and through Jesus Christ are we ever going to figure that out. I'm telling you, your best friend ain't going to tell you. He's going to tell you some things that you don't see. But he's not going to tell you how. Only Jesus Christ, through spending time with the Lord, is going to reveal them things. I'm telling you. It's truth. He is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. This verse also speaks of the influence of a person's thoughts and attitudes on his or her life. Whatever occupies a person's thinking will eventually work its way out in words or actions. Paul follows the challenge to think about these things by telling believers to practice these things. 
The qualities and character traits listed in the verse will lead to healthy thought patterns that will be shown in a life of moral purity and spiritual fitness. Y'all know I'm always trying to go to the gym and get me some fitness going, you know. I've been seeing some results and I've been switching things up and things are looking good. I'm not going to lie. Um, but with that being said, we need spiritual fitness more than we need physical fitness. We need to surround ourselves with nothing but the word. The word, the, the living word of God is the only thing that's going to help us. We keep trying everything else. Trust me, I know I've been doing it. I've been trying everything else, but once I've been determined, once I've been focused, once I got, you know, revelation of what I needed to do to fix my life, I have to do it. I have to get the word in me because the word is what fixes our lives. We fix our eyes on him. That's, you know, though none go with me, people may leave me because of what I'm doing. But they're eventually, maybe they won't come back to me, but my prayer is that they come back to God. Because he's the author and the finisher of our lives. He's the one that's going to fix what we need to fix. You know, I keep telling you guys that I'm worried about a wife. I keep telling you guys that I'm worried about a house. I'm worried about my eternal salvation with my Lord Jesus Christ. This little time that I'm spending on earth has nothing compared to eternal salvation. That I'm going to be living next to him, with him, with all my family that's up there waiting for me. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But it's just... I'm worried about the wrong things. And some of you are too. I just pray that you guys get your mind right. And please fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him speak to you. Try to take your focus away from all these other things that are hindering your life. Once you get them other things out, he's going to shine. He's, he's going to give you revelation. He will. I promise. And kids, if you see this and you watch this, same thing. You know, your studies, don't let them hinder your walk with the Lord. You know, he's going to he's going to revive you. He's going to give you more more uh, uh, more brain capacity to learn these things if you just ask him. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. The Lord is so good. Just position yourself to hear his voice. What I like to do, friends, I used to never like reading. I could never read in front of somebody, and I feel like I'm reading in front of a lot of people right now. So um, the more I do it, the better I get. So, and one thing, reading the Word is just awesome, you know, and I want to try to prepare a sermon. Yeah, I'm going to get back in the game with that. Uh, prepare a sermon for around my 40th birthday. Um, so stay tuned. Um, I will look forward to maybe seeing some of you. Um, and I just pray for all of you despite what we went through despite what we had despite what we lost don't focus on me don't focus on us focus on the Lord because he's the only one that's going to mend your heart fix the situation and give you the best result that you're looking for there's no other noun that will maybe I should name the message there's no other noun that can <laughs> yeah I don't know but I just truly hope and pray that you guys find the way. And the way is through Jesus Christ. I love you. I thank you. And I pray for each and every one of you. Love God. Love others. Love yourselves. Peace.